Hey Noob Time, I got a question for you. Have you ever wished that you knew exactly the best brawlers in Team Com for Gem Grab when you're playing with your friends? Yo, Noob Time only makes friends with the ladies. And right now my friends list is a little empty. <laughs> hmm. Well, that's really weird because I asked my wife and she thinks you're hot and she's got great taste. But that's not really the point here. How about playing the best brawlers for solo queue when you're playing with randoms in Gem Crab? Hmm, now that does sound like something I would like. Well, noob time, it's about time that I share with you the best brawlers and best team comp for Gem Crab, whether you're playing with your friends or you're jumping in to play with randoms. Oh, wow. This. This is big. Now guys, today's video is not made to entertain, it's not made to make you laugh, it's not even made to show you amazing gameplay provided by yours truly. But if you focus and you follow along with this video, I promise you, you will gain a better understanding of the meta and of all of the maps on Gem Grab, especially which ballers are the best and where to play them on Gem Grab. Now the meta will change in future updates, but as long as people really do like this video and they think it's worth me actually upkeeping, then I will update it as the meta shifts. So if you like this and you want me to do this for other game modes other than Gem Grab, please let me know after this video. Make sure you subscribe as well so you don't miss it and share it with your friends if you think somebody could actually benefit from it. Like noob time. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start off by talking about Ancient Cavern. I've got all these brawlers right here below me and those are the brawlers that are going to be the best for Ancient Cavern. Now I've tried to do the best so that like, for example, Barley and Dynamite on this map typically would go on to the left, so they're on the left. Um, whereas Pam and Penny would actually go in the middle, so they're in the middle. And then Spike and Nita would typically go on the right, so they're on the right. Additionally, the three top brawlers are going to be your best options if you do want to jump into this specific map. These That's like the, the best comp for the map um, in most situations. Now there are other brawlers that are also good on the map, and so what I try to do is make it so that if you didn't want to play Barley, for example, then you look right below Barley and that's going to be Dynamite. Mike, and that means that Dynamite does a pretty good job at replacing Barley if you do want to, or if you want to be pushing your Dynamite. Similarly, Pam is a good alternative for Penny, and Nita is a good alternative for Spike. I'll try to clarify some different situations though, because for example, on Ancient Cavern, Spike and Nita are actually both pretty equivalent. I just had to put one on top and one below. But to be clear, Pam is not as good as Penny, and Dynamite is not as good as Barley. Additionally, guys, I actually separated them into different colors, okay? So the yellow framed brawlers are going to be ones that if you do not have a team to play with and you are going to be jumping into solo queue with randoms, the yellow frame brawlers are going to be the ones that are good enough for the map that they can be played with randoms. If you have to play with randoms. On the flip side of things, the black framed brawlers are brawlers that are good for the map as long as you have teammates that you can count on or as long as you know that you do actually have a team composition that does work for that map. For example, I wouldn't jump into this map with Mortis at playing with randoms because Mortis does require a solid team composition for him to actually succeed. But if you know that you're going to have a solid gem carrier and you know you're going to have a solid support brawler, then Mortis does make sense because he does counter those throwers, which are very prevalent on Ancient Cavern. Okay, now specifically, your best bet for Barley or Dynamite is going to be to come up over onto this side right here and use this wall as protection. And that gives you a whole area of denial that you can actually really apply pressure to um, the enemy team. Now, if you're playing Penny, you're going to be playing in the middle right here, and probably the best place for you to actually put your turret is going to be right here. And then when you are attacking, I definitely recommend uh, paying attention to choke points right here, right here, and right here. You can also put a turret back right here, but that does put it within range of an enemy thrower. And so only do that if you want to play an especially aggressive play, and you do have the enemy team pushed back. If you're going to be replacing Penny with Pam, then my best recommendations for healing station positions are right there right here or even right here if you absolutely are needing to play that defensive play. You can also put it up right here but I don't recommend that too much because then an enemy thrower is just easily going to be able to take it out. Spike and Eater are best played over on the right side right here where they can try to get in and access to this section right here or even come over right here. If you need to be a little bit more defensive you can come right here and then they do have the option of being replaced with either Terra or Mortis if you know that you're gonna have a solid team comp. Jesse also works out if you have a solid team that you can rely on. She's not as great because throwers do counter Jesse's. For 
for her, a lot of the times you just want to place out your turret and then th show out three quick shots to try and take out enemy brawlers, or try and throw on a part of the map where the enemy thrower is not dominating. These brawlers right below me are the best tools for this map. So they will help you in more frequently, which is why I recommend playing them. But if you do have a really solid team comp and you want to play around with some other brawlers, then go ahead and have some fun with it. This is a game after all. Also guys, my competitive tier list collaborators helped me a ton in putting this type of video together. So this isn't just information that I'm like coming out from like my own mind. This is also information from 20 other top tier players that have helped select the best brawlers for each of these maps. With that being said, let's go ahead and start talking about Bone Box. Now this map is unlike any other gem grab map and has a totally different meta than all the other ones. Side brawlers can obviously go to either side because it's a symmetrical map, but there is one thing that you want to pay attention to, okay? There are two strategies to this map. Either you want to split up to the traditional three lanes like this, and then try and uh, push together as a team. Or, right from the beginning, all three of you want to go into the middle with one of you guys going over here, one of you guys going into that bush, and one of you guys kind of like playing the middle, seeing what you want to do if you do want to go hide or not, um, or if you actually do want to just go up to the center and try and dominate. By doing this, you guys can effectively control this spot this spot and this spot which prevents anybody from actually entering the bone box which is all that really matters is getting those gems and then being able to successfully leave with this strategy there's a lot of times where enemy brawlers will come in right here and then like take you guys out when you have all the gems and obviously on the opposite side as well so you definitely want to be paying close attention to that now poco really works great on this map because of his huge area denial with his attacks it's really easy for him to check a lot of bush all at the same time and he can help burst heal your teammates and on this map where there are a lot of tankier brawlers that actually work like el primo or frank that makes poco really really great and pam is also a really solid option for this now for pam there are a couple different places you can put your turret if you guys are going on the offense you can always put it back right here or if you're on the defense you guys can put it back right here and if you guys have really great control of the center you can also put it back right here because putting it down in these two sections right here will actually leave that turret vulnerable to enemy brawlers coming down like this spike and rico are also really great brawlers once again it doesn't matter which side they're going on right here and the spike is just so fantastic at everything that he does so i don't even feel like i really need to talk about that but ricochet does a really great job um, at kind of controlling these walls, you know, bouncing shots off right there. I mean, this map is just so great for Rico. Then, of course, Frank and El Primo do a really great job with this. They have lots of bushes that allows them to sneak around, and they deal so much damage so quickly that allows them to really be effective on this map. Now, I do have Jesse here as a brawler that I would not go in with randoms, and the reason why, a lot of people will play, like, tanks and stuff like that on this map, and Jesse does not help out those tanks very much at all. Where Jesse really thrives is if you are doing some type of a really big control type, um, composition like like a jesse spike and ricochet it just controls so much of the map makes it really difficult for any enemy brawler to really get in there shelly also works great on this map as a tank counter and tara can also work as long as you know for sure that you had to have a solid team comp that you can rely on a bit next we have crystal cavern right here now the one thing you need to realize about the side brawlers is that there's just one side brawler which really matters which side, and that's going to be Ricochet. Um, Ricochet will come up over here onto the left. That's the best place for him to do so because he can fire off right here and control things very, very well. Or he can actually also fire out down this direction, just kind of depending. He's, he's just so great on the left side. He can work over on the right side if you really need him to. Other than that, Nita, Spike, and Terra can be left or right. Though I will say Spike does tend to do a little bit better over on the right side of things um, with his ability to actually keep people spawn trapped right here. Now for this you do want the traditional three lanes okay you want to do it just like this one mistake that I see a lot of players do is actually come up right here um, and have like another person in the middle and then maybe someone come over here or even like all three of them right down the middle this is an issue and the reason why this is an issue is because this map you're likely to face off against pennies you're likely to face off against Jesse's you're likely to face off against pipers all these brawlers where if you miss one brawler and you're all bunched up in this this tiny little section right here and that enemy piper misses a brawler they're very likely to hit another brawler or the jesse or penny will get splash damage and actually hit the other brawlers because you guys are bunched up so it's really tempting to all go in the middle or to be in the middle with the gem carry but you want to avoid it as much as you possibly can obviously barring there's not like a situation where you need to go grab the gems or something like that and your gem carrier is out now for Penny, best turret positions are going to be behind this wall, behind this wall, maybe even back right here if you need to be really defensive. 
Pam's healing station is going to be the same either right here or right here. The one thing you want to know, notice, is just pay attention to which of your teammates has the more HP. Then, of course, Piper also works on this map. She's absolutely amazing on this map. Like, one of the best gem carriers for this map because of her ability to just almost always know that somebody's going to be right here or right here, for example. And you just fire in those bushes when you have those three shots. And then once you know where brawlers are, you can use the other two shots. And she's just she's just incredible, but she has to have a good solid team comp to actually work out because Piper really struggles at controlling a lot of the map. So she has to rely on solid brawlers like Nita or Spike that can control a large part of the map in order for her to actually do well. Okay, now for Deep Hollows, the most important thing is that you have one gem carrier and then the other brawlers, you can toss them up between Spike, Mortis, Barley, or Nita. And if you have a solid team comp, even Dynamite or Terra. Now for the three lanes right here, you're typically going to have this, this, and then this. Now if you're playing Penny, the best place for you to put your turret is just going to be right here. It's just such a great place. If this wall gets destroyed, you can also break this little bone thing right there and put it right there. This map does feature a lot of throwers, and throwers do count for that turret pretty well, so make sure you're just paying attention to which side of that map the thrower is on so that it does not end up getting countered. Penny can be replaced with Pam, and with Pam, you want to try and place your turret on whichever side your aggro brawler is going to be that has more HP. Most of the time, it's going to depend on where the enemy thrower is. You just want to make sure it's not getting countered by the thrower. Now for this map, where the thrower is going to go is going to depend on where they're going to be countering. You want the thrower to either play to get rid of enemy turrets, or you want to play thrower v thrower. Mortis works really well as an anti-thrower brawler, but the very most important thing that I have to cannot emphasize anymore is Mortis is not, not a gem carrier. Do not play Mortis as a gem carrier. He is not one. Mortis is an aggro brawler that's whole, whose whole goal is to go up onto the enemy side and try and just be aggro. Try and just like keep those squishy brawlers out of the other brawler's hair. Get rid of their thrower. Get rid of their squishier brawlers like Penny or something like that. You just, and then once you do guys have enough gems for the count, then he can escape down here and pick up some gems on his way to actually win, to start the countdown. If he is over here and he kills somebody and there are gems right there, obviously you're going to pick up the gems. But one mistake that I see people doing is Mortis hanging out in the bush right here and the gem pops up and he comes up and swipes it and comes back and then hides back out. In this situation, Mortis relies entirely on his two other teammates to control the other map, which is why Mortis does not have the primary goal of picking up the gems. He has the primary goal of going up and terrorizing those lower HP brawlers. Other options for this map, if you really do want to play Mike, you can definitely switch out Barley for him, but Barley does do a better job at controlling the map. Similarly with Terra, where she can do a great job at replacing Nita or Spike or even Mortis. Maybe even Barley if you do have a Mortis on your team, who kind of like is a, an anti-thrower brawler. Up next, we have Echo Chamber. I'm going to tell you something. Probably the best brawler for a middle gem carrier on this map is Piper. But similarly to how I have mentioned in the past, Piper completely relies on their teammates to actually be able to control the other sides and she cannot control three sides at once. So if you do have a solid team that you can rely on to actually do that, Piper is gonna be your first option. But if you do not, then we have Penny as your close second as a viable option when playing with randoms. And the reason why Piper and Penny work so well is because they it just, they don't have anywhere to run. It's just super easy to know where they're going to be. And you're less likely to miss with either of them. Now, if you are playing Penny, there are two turret options that you can use. Um, you can put it right here, but because this is in the bushes, it's more likely to actually get taken out. Um, so the best place for her turret is going to be right there. Now, for this map, typically you'll have an aggro brawler come up over here and then you'll have a control brawler over here to try and keep those aggro brawlers from getting into your side of things. As such, Ricochet does a really great job at coming into this side because he can actually um, use that wall to bounce off and try and make sure that there aren't an aggro brawler right behind this wall. And it's for that same reason that Bo actually works really great on this right side of things as a way to kind of, you know, just so that you know that you're not going to get bush rushed or anything like that. Now for the left side of things here, we've got Brock, and Brock does a really great job on the left side because of this stray shot right up here. As always, Spike does a great job at kind of controlling this side right here as well. And Pam does a great job because when she's in the middle, um, because if she's standing right here, she can cover this whole section right here. She will guarantee shots 
um, and kind of push brawlers like Piper or Penny out who typically don't have a ton of HP. Then obviously she can use her turret back right here just um, depending on which side is going to be more beneficial for your for your higher HP brawler. Next we've got Flooded Mine where Pam is going to be your best gem carrier because she does such a good job at kind of, you know, she can, she can keep herself protected on the right side by covering that entire section. She can also cover this entire section right here. The other best bet is going to be Bo, where he can actually just use his star power to look into the bushes and always prevent some type of a bush rush or anything like that. Ricochet is going to be your solid bet onto the right side of things where he can actually, you know, prevent people from coming in over here. He can also fire into the left side of bushes if you're expecting a, a bush rush. And if you do want to play with Frank, Frank is also a solid option over onto this right side. The one thing with Frank of the caution that I have is try so hard not to break this wall here, okay? If you break that wall, then it just opens up the entire section for Frank to actually get taken out. So the ideal situation is for him to come out right here and then super up right there, or to come up over here and super like this. Wow, I really suck at drawing. Spike and Nita are solid options here over on the left. Spike can check around these corners, you know, with his with his spiky blasts. With Nita or Terra or El Primo, the reason why you want to go left here is because this tiny little section right here is all that's preventing you from actually doing some type of a bush rush to get into this side right here. A lot of times the gem carriers will, you know, kind of come down into this bush and kind of hide out and, you know, go left or right, depending, you know, where they're trying to juke or dodge shots and stuff like that, then they come into the bush. If you've got your Primo or your Nita right here, then you just wait and you can easily, easily take out a gem carrier really, really quickly with either one of them. If you want to do a Rico Frank comp as well, then that totally works out with Rico over on the right and then Frank over on the left. Whoo boy, okay. I know there's been a lot of like deep digesting of all the information of all of the maps in Gem Grab, but we're still not quite done yet. We still have Hard Rock Mine, Mushroom Cave, and Temple Catacombs, and you're definitely not going to want to miss it. So let's go ahead and jump into a Hard Rock Mine, one of the best maps in Gem Grab, if you ask me. Now for Gem Grab, it's a really close call between Pam or Penny for Gem Carrier, but both of them work out pretty well. With Penny, you're going to want to make sure you're placing your turret right here, or even right here, or right here, kind of depending on what's going on. I don't recommend an off of turret placement right there. Now for this map, this map is really cool because almost every single situation you're going to want to have an aggro brawler going left. Okay, The reason why they go left is because if they can get access into this bush, then they can control this whole bush right here and really keep people pushed back. So for those aggro brawlers, you're typically going to be playing Nita or Terra over onto the left. Then you're going to be playing Spike and um, Ricochet over on the right. One of my favorite things as Ricochet is to come right here and just fire off shots right there. And if you do that just right, it's just so hard for an enemy brawler to get in there. Other brawlers that work well, Poco can be a decent gem carrier on this map, and Brock can also work out. And next, guys, we got Mushroom Cave, and probably the best brawler that you can pick on this map is gonna be Barley. And typically, you're gonna be playing Barley over onto the left and using this wall as protection while you do cast out your attacks and protect this whole section right here. If he needs to go defensively, he can come over here and use this wall to try and like take care of people in the middle. He's just a great brawler. He can be replaced with Dynamite, but I wouldn't actually go in with randoms with Dynamite. Barley offers a lot more control than Dynamite does, where Dynamite typically offers more DPS. And control is king in gem grab, which is why I wouldn't recommend doing it with randoms. But if you do have a team comp that you know is working, then Dynamite can be a solid option to be pushed in Mushroom Cave. Now for gem carriers, we've got three gold frame gem carriers. These are great brawlers for this. We've got Pi Penny, and we also have Jesse, and then we also have Pam. For Penny's turret positioning, you're gonna wanna put it right here. That's, that's just the best. Always you want to avoid the thrower, but other than that like that's such a good spot for it for Pam I've mentioned it before you want to support your brawler that has more HP now spike and Nita are great brawlers for the right side of things And Terra can also be a decent replacement for Nita, spike or Nita if you do have a good team comp Last up guys, we've got Temple Catacombs, and this is probably the most important map for you to play with a good team. Otherwise, you run the risk of getting spawn trapped and losing a lot of trophies. Now the best gem carrier for this map is going to be Penny. Penny's job is just to come right here and just like poke shots off and then hide behind this wall and poke shots off. And you're mostly gonna be aiming for that choke point right there or this choke point right there. Pam also works out throwing your healing station, you know, right here or right here. Or, um, or even like further back right here, just kind of depending on where your aggro brawler is. Now for this map where we've got Spike, Terra, Barley, Ricochet, it doesn't really matter which side with each of the brawlers go on, but you do absolutely want to pick, you know, three different sides. It's best played with three sides. 
Spike and Ricochet are typically better up over onto the right side of things where Ricochet has this wall that he can bounce shots off of and stuff, but it, it doesn't really matter that much on which side they're going to, just kind of depending. In fact, it's probably be better to just go based off of roller counters. Spike and Barley are also really amazing options for this. You can play Terra or Anita if you do have good team comps and things like that. Terra is good enough that you can play with randoms, but they're not nearly quite as good for this map as Spike and Ricochet and Barley are. Jesse can also work out if you do have the right team comp. Most of the time with Jesse, you're going to want to be able to place it back down right there, or even in this bush square right there. There. You just have to kind of be patient and push back the enemy team enough so that you can put it right there. And if you do that, this map just works so great. If you got Ricochet coming off, bouncing shots off like that, you got Spike coming up over here, or Nita coming up over here and causing issues. Then you have Jesse poking out right here and shooting off with her turret right there. It's so hard to get out of that spawn trap. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know that I really enjoyed making this video, and I think that the information is really, really great. My own worry is that, like, it's too much information, and maybe I should have sort of done it with less info or something. I don't know. Like for real though, I do want to know what you guys thought about this video. And if you do want more for heist, brawl ball, bounty, showdown even. I mean, you guys let me know in the comment section and I, I want to create videos that you guys find interesting that you want to watch. Regardless guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I want to give a huge thank you to my YouTube and Patreon sponsors for helping to support my channel and making it a possibility. For now, this is Kairos time ticking by and we will see you in Brawl Stars.